Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I'm the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Sagramor, the Mortal Blade. Well, this is kind of a unique episode. I am going to basically be giving you a quick review of um, how the respec efforts went and kind of let you know what I have uh, spent, spent my efforts on, um, how, how things came out, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, footage here of a little test excursion I went on with Sagramore after um, redoing his perks and his gear, um, just to kind of see how it all felt, you know? So, let's get to it. Um, <clears throat> so, in the last episode, I talked at length about how I wanted to respec the character's perks, and really try to see what would happen if I focused more on alteration as opposed to, say, destruction um, or restoration. Uh, I I still, I guess I do believe that this character is going to need some degree of restoration skill. I think that's a smart thing for us to invest in, um, even in just at a minimal level, just to get uh, novice restoration. Regeneration, which is going to double, or no, it's going to increase the capacity of our healing spells by 50%, which is significant. And then also to get Respite, which will allow us to restore stamina at the same time that we're healing. I think those are the three perks that I would focus on for Restoration. And, you know, at higher level, if you have, you know, have more points to spend you know, and stuff like Apprentice Restoration, just a, things to bring the cost of casting healing spells down, that's great. But I think my recommendation for the build is going to be that minimum we, we invest in Novice Restoration, the Respite perk, and the Regeneration perk from the Restoration Tree. Um, what that allows me to do, though, is really, instead of focusing on this idea that we were discussing before about um, investing in destruction for the use of cloaking spells to increase damage output, um, as I had mentioned in the previous episode, I just kind of came to this realization that the focus really just needed to be on defense, and we needed to rely on our weaponry and our tactics to to be our offensive weapons so armor and spell kind of work is at this point focused on defense so what i did is i used a mod to wipe out all the perks and just reassign the perks now the thing that i did not do is i did not mess with my attribute scores so uh, i still have the same amount invested in health, the same amount invested in stamina, magicka, etc. This character is far enough along now that the idea of kind of starting over with that stuff just doesn't make sense. Um, the, the fact is that what we've done to this point is kind of invest alternately in health and stamina. And then when we hit level 32, I think, I started investing um, almost exclusively in stamina. So at the moment, we are at the default 100 Magicka. Um, we have 270 health, and we've got a fairly deep well of stamina at 330. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So what I did is I wiped out all the perks. I said, leave well enough alone. The attributes, I just really can't do much with them. So let's just keep it as it is, and we will augment our Magicka as necessary with Enchanted Gear. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So then I went back through the perk tree, and I'm just going to step through it uh, one section at a time. So, in smithing, again, we're talking about vanilla perks here. I started with steel smithing, took arcane blacksmith, dwarven smithing, orcish smithing, and ebony smithing. Um, those have been fine investments for me. 
I have not seen the need to invest in, in anything above ebony at this point. So then on the heavy armor side of things, um, four levels in Juggernaut, and then went up the right side of that perk tree to well-fitted. That's a 25% armor bonus for wearing all heavy armor, head, chest, hands, and feet, which we are doing. So that's a 25% armor bonus. That is um, nothing to sneeze at. That is significant, especially in the kind of fights that we're talking about. Then I continued up that way and took Tower of Strength. That's 50% less stagger when wearing only heavy armor. So this is actually going to help us in some of these situations, right? N not only in melee combat, but these situations where the dragons, of course, were causing a stagger effect. Um, Tower of Strength is something that um, I've had previously as well. So you can imagine how bad the stagger would have been against the Iron Dragon had we not had Tower of Strength. Um, and that is where I stopped on the heavy armor tree. Now, the next one up is matching set, which is an additional 25% armor bonus if you're wearing a match set. We know, however, that Sagramore is not going to do that. We have pieced together the look that we want for this character from three different sets. So um, that just isn't going to happen. Now, the other thing, if you, if you can imagine, it would be really great to get to the point where we could get the conditioning perk. But the, the problem with heavy armor uh, in the vanilla tree is that you basically have to waste, you have to throw away two perks before you can even get to conditioning. You have to invest in Fists of Steel, which gives you bonuses on unarmed attacks, which Sagramore is never going to do, and Cushioned, which is half damage from falling, which also is just an absolute throwaway perk. Um, so that is kind of an unfortunate thing. I would love to have conditioning that would allow us to increase the movement rate. In other words, not be encumbered by our heavy armor. Um, I know that we can achieve the same thing by getting the Steed Stone, but I think it's far more important for a character like Sagramore to you know, be using something like the Lord Stone, which is what we're using currently, that gives us a, a, a bonus on armor and magic resistance. So that's unfortunate, but that is kind of the way it is uh, in vanilla. So the next thing uh, I invested in is blocking uh, four levels in shield wall and then quick reflexes. And then I kind of went equally up both sides of this tree. I took uh, Power Bash, which enables us to do a power bash, and then followed by deadly bash. And it, that basically allows bashing to do five times more damage. That's why we're starting to see more kill cams from shield bashing, which is amazing. That's great. Every time we block, which is something that we're doing all the time anyway, we have a chance of significantly injuring our opponent. Um, so then I went up the other side of the block tree and took Deflect Arrows. We've seen that in action, too. That's, that's um, really proven to be a worthwhile perk. So when we have that shield up and we're walking toward our enemies, um, quite often we will see arrows actually bounce off the shield rather than hitting us, which is great. And then the all-important Elemental Protection perk. This one is essential. Um, blocking with a shield reduces incoming fire, frost, and shock damage by 50%. That's huge. So that one is definitely a must. So that's kind of where we're at in blocking right now. There are a couple other things that might be nice to have. Block runner would be great. It, it gives us a faster movement rate when we have our shield raised, so we can actually run with the shield up. Um, disarming bash, eh, you know... Uh, it would be nice to kind of disarm our opponents and stuff like that, but this that one's not critical. Um, I would probably take Block Runner before I took that. So um, in the blocking skill, we are at level 78. Incidentally, um, Heavy Armor. Uh, heavy Armor, what are we at here? 
heavy armor we are at 81 which is really nice and that is also being augmented um, through abilities uh, or enchantments to up over 100. Uh, just to follow up quick, smithing was at level 84. So let's continue on down kind of the heavy armor weapon kind of section here. So this gets us into one-handed. Um, Sagramore's natural ability with one-handed right now is at 101. He's level 101, uh, which is pretty amazing. And that's just through just getting in there and hacking and slashing and doing the work that needs to be done. Um, that is not augmented um, by anything. Um, that is his base skill level. So here I took all five levels in Armsman, all three levels in Bladesman, which gives me um, a better chance of doing critical damage. Um, then Fighting Stance, which is power attacks with one-handed weapons cost 25% less stamina. This is also critical, I think. Um, it, it just makes the cost of swinging the sword less expensive. All right, Critical Charge, took that perk as well. That's one that I love, I use all the time um, with uh, mixed success. But this is basically um, a one-handed charging power attack that does double critical damage. So that's a good one. And then Savage Strike. Savage Strike is a standing power attack. In other words, you're not moving anywhere, you're just taking the big swing and you do 25% bonus damage with a chance to decap your enemies. Now, the only other thing above that would be the Paralyzing Strike. I could see us taking the Paralyzing Strike at some point, which is a backwards power attack, and it has a 25% chance of paralyzing the target. Um, it's a fantastic perk. It's probably the most difficult one to actually execute, but um, it's certainly worth having. I don't know that we'll invest in that very soon. I think we've got more to invest in on kind of the defensive side of the equation here. So that is really it for martial skills. I mean, when we break this down, it is pretty damn simple. Um, we're, we're talking about, you know, heavy armor, blocking, and one-handed. Those are kind of our combat-related skills. We're focused on crafting so that we can maintain our gear. And then the other two skills that we're focused on right now are alteration and enchanting. So let's talk a little bit um, about alteration. I mentioned it earlier. The, the idea here is that what we want to do is is really focus on, I think, four critical perks in alteration. First, we have to start with novice alteration. Next, we need to get up to apprentice alteration. And when we hit apprentice alteration, then we've got a branch and we can go um, mage armor, we can go adept, and we can go magic resistance. There's really only one choice that makes sense here, and that's magic resistance. So at this point, um, Sagramore is level 43 in alteration. So I've taken novice alteration, an apprentice alteration, and one level in magic resistance, which is giving me a 10%. Um, it blocks 10% of a spell's effects on me. So we can get that up to 30%, which is where we want to go. We want to get to that 30% eventually. Um, but the one thing um, that we, we don't want to do is invest in mage armor. Mage armor um, really helps enhance those protection spells like stone flesh. It makes them twice as strong, but it only applies if you're wearing um, only robes. So... Obviously, we, we get most of our, you know, physical damage protection not from casting spells, but from the armor that we're wearing and maintaining and smithing up and all that stuff. So you, there's no need to invest in that. So here we're focused on basically magic resistance, 
apprentice alteration because we have to get there first, novice alteration. And, you know, I went ahead and invested a perk in alteration dual casting. I'm on the fence about this, right? Because mage armor doesn't apply for us, I thought, you know, alteration dual casting might be a nice option for us to have. And basically what it does is if we dual cast our alteration spells, it would overcharge the effects and make them more powerful, which means that our stone skin spell, for example, if we were to dual cast it, would provide us with um, some additional protection. <clears throat> but after some consideration, I have thought that that is perhaps not a critical perk here. We spend so much time doing sword and board, and the only time we ever put that shield down is to quickly cast a spell and get the shield back up again. It's really difficult to imagine Sagramore in a combat situation going to dual casting mode. So I'm thinking that I'm not going to recommend alteration dual casting. However, that might be one of those nice to haves when a person gets up fairly high level. So that leaves us with one remaining skill and that is in enchanting. This, it, this one is critical. Um, if, if you're interested in creating your own gear, creating your own look, you pretty much have to do this. Um, you could spec this character to use only uh, items that are available in the, in the vanilla game um, and, and probably do pretty well and then reinvest these perk points in something else, but that's not how I'm playing. If you want to play that way, awesome. Um, I would make a punch list for yourself of the particular items that you think might be good to acquire so that you could just use vanilla gear. But what I've done here is I've invested four levels in Enchanter, and Sagramore is a level 70 Enchanter at the moment. So I've got four levels in Enchanter, which... Um, makes my enchantments 80% stronger, which is terrific. <laughs> uh, and then I also took Insightful Enchanter. And this, um, this gives me a 25% bonus on any enchantments that are sort of skill enchantments you might put on armor, for example. So if I were to create um, a set of gauntlets, for example, of, of wielding to you know, fortify my one-handed, this 25% would apply there. Now, the next thing I want to acquire is Corpus Enchanter, because that's going to give me a 25% bonus on any enchantments I create for health, magicka, and stamina, which is also really great. So, uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I think that there is probably a lot to be gained by going up the left-hand side of the enchanting tree as well because this is where we find all those elemental enchants like you know fire enchantments um frost and storm so you know whether we're putting those enchantments on weapons to do damage or we're putting um you know at these elemental enchantments to protect us from fire shock or frost um we will definitely benefit from these bonuses but again um i'm first recommending you know kind of going up the center of that tree and then of course the ultimate would be to get to the very top of it at at level 100 enchanting and get extra effect which would allow us to put multiple enchantments on a single piece of gear which would really put us over the top in terms of power especially when it comes to creating these defensive pieces of armor that we need to fight dragons that are as powerful as the ones that we find in elemental dragons. So that is kind of how everything worked out in terms of perks. In, in the end, it wasn't a really significant change in how, in how I had previously specced my perks. Um, essentially what I did is I, I had I basically pulled anything that I had, had invested in restoration and anything I had invested in destruction and focused it all on alteration for the purposes of, of defense. So that's kind of where we're at with the perks right now. Now, 
after I respec the perks, then uh, I took some time to basically recreate all of the gear that that Sagramore has been using uh, to benefit from these changes and to benefit from the additional level that we acquired um, on recent adventures. And so the first thing I did was go to the enchanters table and just made a bunch of stuff with the remaining soul gems I had. I think I had five or six crappy soul gems. And then once I had done that and acquired any levels I needed from that, recreated the gear. So this is basically how it shook out. I've the storm Lord Curus. Um, <clears throat> the storm Lord Curus, I upgraded. It requires two ebony ingots to do that. And given our smithing level, I was able to upgrade the Stormlord Curus to Legendary, which gives us a base armor protection of uh, 229 points, and then placed an enchantment on that Curus that increases our heavy armor skill by 24 points. That makes us pretty damn tanky, and that's what we need against these dragons. Then created a set of the ebony silver gauntlets, just like we had before. Smith those up to legendary with an ebony ingot. Uh, base armor of 99 and added a shock resistance enchantment to those that protects us from 37% uh, shock. Then moved on to the boots. Again, silver ebony boots required um, one ebony ingot to smith those up to legendary base armor of 99 again and we are being protected by 37 percent fire resistance there which is great created a new silver ebony shield smith that up to legendary base armor uh on this guy is 78 and um placed an enchantment on that that enhances our block by 40%. So we, we are gonna block 40% more damage with that. All right, so that's kind of the base armor setup. Now, then uh, I decided to focus things like jewelry on stuff that was more offensive. So I created a silver ring that fortifies one-handed attacks by 40%. That was the enchantment I was able to get on that using a grand soul gem. Then I created a left-hand ring that is the identical of that. On the left hand, he's got also a ring that enhances one-handed attacks by 40%. Uh, and then rounded the whole thing out with a necklace. And <clears throat> I think... Um, well, let's let's talk quickly about the cape because he is wearing a black cape as well, and that doesn't provide us with any armor whatsoever. But I did take the opportunity to put on it um, an enchantment that brings down the cost of alteration spells by fifteen percent and allows our magic to regenerate ten percent faster. Uh, because it's a cape, it's technically an item of clothing. I can put some of those kind of typical mage robe type of enchantments on it. So that's going to help us out a lot. And then we also um, obviously have our, our dragon bone ebon steel hood, which is our heavy armor hood that we've been wearing. That I also smithed up to legendary for base armor of 85. And that I put an enchantment on to increase our resistance to magic by 19%. That hood is what's going to help take care of the extra magic resistance we need until we've acquired all three perks in the magic resistance, you know, alteration perk tree. So that, that I, I guess, finishes out the, the armor, if you will. So then, uh, as far as the necklace goes, I just created a, a simple silver necklace and put an enchantment on that to increase our Well of Magicka by 49 points. That gives it, gets us almost up to 150 Magicka and, and helps to enhance the Well that we can draw from when casting Alteration spells and uh, eventually Restoration spells as well. So 
that's kind of how things came together. And then for the first time, I actually decided to go ahead and enchant the weapons that we've been using. So you got to see, you know, the, these weapons. You'll see these weapons in action when, when Joe does his, his crawl of, of Sarthal. But our standard blade is the, the Oathkeeper blade. That's the one that we use most often. I was able to smith that up to um, a damage number of 204, which is really great. Um, and that I put an enchantment on to absorb stamina. So this is, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, it takes stamina away from the enemy and gives stamina to us even as we're fighting because power attacks are a big part of of our, I guess, fighting style. Um, so the the damage on this, again, 204. I think that is, you know, that's taking into account, I think, some of the gear that I'm wearing that, that gets us to that number. So, you know, the rings and so forth. Um, and then the Strider's Claymore, um, that is our dragon-killing weapon. That's our sanctified blade. I smith that up as well and put an enchantment on that to steal health. And that's basically how it rounded out, folks. I hope that helps. Uh, this is a good setup for the next adventure.